Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming. Today, I'm doing my intro on PV Poke because I wanted to see what I wanted to do. I have a hacko o video in mind with the Brick Break, but unfortunately, I don't have enough Stardust for that. So, when I went on PV Poke for the Open Great League, I noticed Shadow Quagsire is 4th place on PV Poke. If you want to find out what the non-shadow is, I think it's like 30th, and the recommended moveset has now changed to Mudshot, Aqua Tail and Stone Edge. I actually happen to have a perfect IV that I want to use for the Ultra League, which we are going to now test out into the Open Great League. So, Quagsire is a ground and water type, so it's a Mud Boy with the moveset of Mud Shot, which used to be Mud Bomb, but now is Aqua Tail and Stone Edge. I don't have a shadow version, which is ranked much higher on PV Poke, but you know what? The shadow and the non-shadow will have their pros and cons and their moments. Teammates I'm going to pair is with the Mantine, as Mud Boy with a Mantine is pretty good. It's just not as strong to grass types as the Skarmory. So we also have the Charger Bug with that as well as the Charger Bug is going to handle grass types. It also will be a bait out if the opponent has a potential rock type like a Carbink or a Bastion so the Mantine can stay away from it. Which is definitely convenient because I TM'd back to the Ice Beam just because I think it fits better into this meta and it'll have a harder hitting move versus grass types. Maybe not as DPE efficient as the aerial ace but there are definitely the circumstances where you'll want to go for the ice beam so i went 16 and 14 with this team which is okay i did want it to be a little bit higher in the end i still went positive there were also some factors like some battles i messed up there was much more lag today than my usual battles and i feel like i can still recommend you to run this team even if i did end up going negative if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it increases the chances of this video being viewed by a larger audience. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video like this again. Without further ado, let's take a look at Aqua Tail Quagsire in the Open Great League. Another thing about the Aqua Tail Quagsire now being recommended is due to the fact that the Aqua Tail did get a power buff this season. Anyways, I'm going against Doombug97, who won a tournament with a Skeleturge. An extremely good battler, he led with Whimsicott, so we needed to switch out, and now he sends in his Lantern after Moonblasting our Charger Bug. Here's definitely a situation where the Mud Bomb would definitely be better, as I wouldn't have to go all the way up to a Stone Edge. So I am going to let the Surfs go through, and I'm going to maximize my energy onto the Quagsire. So I have the Stone Edge, which should hopefully take out the Lantern. Stone Edge does take out the Lantern. I was thinking of chipping the Whimsicott when it comes back in, but I'm just going to immediately switch, and their final Pokemon is Walrein. Now, my opponent makes a very good play. They didn't go for a Fairy Wind at all and knew I would immediately switch. So they switched into their Wall Rain. And since we both switch at the same time, we both get a one turn swap. So we are actually at the same amount of energy. So my opponent's in a more favorable position onto the cycle of both of our moves. Now, looking back at this, I guess lag didn't make me lose as bad. I think I lost to wing attack. It still is costly because I would have been able to throw an aerial ace and the second one to get rid of the wall rain. But now I have to make this play because if I throw that aerial ace, he can just shield and knock out my mantine. So now my only way to win this game is hope my opponent doesn't have back to back seed bombs here. But someone who wins a tournament, they're going to know how to play the game correctly. So they're at the back to back and they are going to be able to win this game. I think if I did ship the Whimsicott with the Quagsire, maybe I could have won that game through my Mantine. But next game, Quagsire into Lantern. Now my opponent doesn't know we have Mud Bomb, so they're just going to immediately switch. They switch into Skarmory and we come in with Charger Bug. Now we even could have switched into the Mantine and lost Switch Advantage, but I'm going to choose to keep Switch Advantage. I'm going to go for the Discharge, which should get the Knockout versus Skarmory, but my opponent is trying to flip this matchup. I'm not going to allow my opponent to flip this, so we're just going to go down shield, and we both have 1 to 1 shields. So we do take out Skarmory. I went for the X Scissor, anticipating the 
lantern would come back in, but it was the Wigglytuff. So we could have gotten two discharges. Not a huge deal. I come into Mantine, and now I'm going to switch into my Quagsire versus the Lantern when it comes back in. So now it's time to reveal that I'm not running Mud Bomb onto the Quagsire. Luckily, the Mud Shots are going to add up to the point where the Stone Edge is going to be enough to knock out. It's a CMP tie, Stone Edge versus the Surf versus the Lantern. Now my opponent, their win con is with the Lantern, so that's exactly what they're going for. Surf, we're barely able to survive. However, they're going to be able to get the Spark down just as I reach this next Stone Edge. So now my opponent switched into Wigglytuff. I see an easy way to win this game. Take out the Wigglytuff with the Aerial Lace, and Mantine is going to be able to take out a Lantern because they're not going to be able to get the Spark down or successful bait and more charge moves off. Definitely a very good way to win that game. The Mantine beating the Lantern for the win. Next game, Charchabug into Quagsire. This matchup is actually pretty neutral in my opinion, just because we have Stone Edge, which can get shield pressure from the Charchabug, but the Charchabug can go for Volt Switches and the X Scissors might add up to a two hit KO. On the bright side, if we lose Switch, the Charchabug is going to stay away from our Mantine. So I go for two Stone Edges. I do get it to connect. I'm gonna switch into my own Charchabug to get a full Volt Switch through, head start on energy. They come into a Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. So I'm going to go for the Discharge, and the Discharge is able to connect onto the Alolan Sand Slash. They actually let a full Volt Switch through, which there's definitely no reason to. You could just go for a better timing. This allows me to get to this X Scissor, as I think they could have gotten to an Ice Punch with better timing. Now, I do Shield in this matchup, because I don't want Charchabug dealing a bunch of Volt Switch damage to Mantine. So, their last Pokemon's Polyrath. My opponent wasn't counting, so I got a successful X Scissor bait, but even if they called it, the Mantian's going to wall the Polyrath. Next game, Quagsire into Registeel. Another matchup where the Mud Bomb would be better, but we overall do have the advantage in this matchup. They send in a Dragonair. I wasn't sure what to do, so I went for a Risky Aqua Tail Bait, and it pays off. The second thing I want to do is use my Mantine. This is because they have Registeel, so the Zap Cannon will one-hit our Mantine. So if I lose Switch Advantage here, the Registeel doesn't have as much use when we lose our Mantine. So Ice Beam is going to knock out the Shadow Dragonair. They get about six lock-ons worth of energy, I believe. I'm gonna come back into my Quagsire. With that Dragon Breath chip damage, they are able to put us into Focus Blast range, but they don't wanna stay in this matchup and they send in their Shadow for Alligator. They no steal of the Stone Edge, which is pretty good considering we could just discharge the for alligator if they shielded it and the red steel can't beat a charger bug a quagsire and a shield red steel is a pretty powerful pokemon but when pokemon are at such an hp level they are super hard to deal with next game superior into quagsire we have two pretty solid checks to grass types my opponent tries catching an x scissor onto a dugong and we have a very good energy head start so i'm gonna go for the discharge i'm gonna throw on unoptimal timing this is because i can get this discharge before it gets attack dropped now i can take switch advantage i'm going to keep my shield here as now i can line the Mantine onto the Superior, which I would like to use my shield there, as the Superior is going to deal effective damage with the powerful Frenzy Plant. So, down goes the Dugong with the Charger Bug. The opponent is going to perfectly over farm with the Superior and then throw an Aerial Ace. So, I'm going to come in with the Mantine. We get two wing attacks. I'm going to shield the Frenzy Plant. Unless my opponent goes for a risky Aerial Ace bait, they try to catch an Aerial Ace, but I'm going to throw it anyway as I'm going to go for the Aerial Ace and Dip, and I'm going to use my Quagsire. So they're going to throw a move, and I'm easily going to let this go because this Hydro Cannon is going to deal a lot of damage. Now I'm going to go for the Aqua Tail in case they try to shield it. Now I went for back-to-back -back Aqua Tails. In hindsight, I should take another Shadow Claw here because then the Superior gets less farm. They only get two Vine Whips, which shouldn't change out the matchup. As we have better pacing here, and I don't think a Frenzy Plant will knock out. So, we do shield the Frenzy Plant from the Superior. Aerial Ace, they just no shield it because they're not going to be able to outpace. Or knock out with the Frenzy Plant. I honestly think they could have CMP tied and it would have been close. Next game, Quagsire into Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. Another matchup where Mud Bomb would be very good. 
I feel like since I'm showing I'm winning all these leads, I'm showing that the mud bomb would be better. But honestly, the Aqua Tail definitely is convenient for the bait and is a pretty powerful move with stab. We come in Mantine into the Annihilate. I'm going to no shield the Shadow Ball here as we're going to kind of get walled by the Alolan Sand Slash when it comes back in. So Alolan Sand Slash should be coming back in. I'm just going to go for the Aerial Aces. I do fake a Water Pulse. The Aerial Ace is going to deal some decent damage. Nothing too impactful. My opponent's going to look to farm down here as throwing energy into Mantine is not useful at this point for my opponent. I come in with the charge bug and I believe I got a full volt switch through. Ice Punch does deal some decent damage. Now I'm going to shield the next move as we are getting pretty low on our team's HP. Their final Pokemon is Drapion. Once again, more mud bombs would be useful here. We do get the shield, which is honestly a very interesting shield by my opponent. Now they do shield again, so I guess I thought they actually had one shield at this point, but we're just going to go up to the Aqua Tail. We do lose CMP versus the Drapion, but now one X Scissor will take us out. I'm also going to no shield this because an Aqua Tail doesn't take us out. Now this is just a comfortable win as I can just easily fast move this down. So I'm going to shield this. I think worst case scenario was a crunch defense drop second crunch, but I don't think my opponent was throwing on optimal timing. So X Scissor is going to take out the Alolan Sand Slash that did not have a move. Next game, we have Quagsire into Chargebug. So finally, a lead that the Mud Bomb wouldn't be better, and I overall like this moveset better, as we can bait with Aqua Tails. Although, I'm going to go straight for Stone Edge, as we pretty much outpace our opponent here. Stone Edge gets the first shield. We're not going to shield the first x -Scissor. But it does deal some decent damage. They're immediately throwing the next one. I am going to shield this as I would love this stone edge damage. I do an extra mud shot just for optimal timing. Also to make sure my opponent doesn't catch. They did double shield and I'm going to double shield back as like I said, I really want this stone edge damage. My opponent doesn't go for any type of catch, so I'm going to be able to stone edge this. Honestly, my opponent committing shields here is better, as the mud shots are able to add up to put the charge bug into the stone edge range. My opponent sent in a Pelipper, and were able to get to the stone edge. I try to snipe with a Volt Switch, but my opponent switches into Toxicroak. This is a win at this point, as the Toxicroak isn't going to be able to deal a lot of damage versus the charge bug. They could Shadow Ball, but then the Pelipper can't knock us out with the Hurricane. My opponent didn't even go for the Shadow Ball on the Toxicroak to knock us out. A Weather Ball doesn't even knock out the Charge Bug either, so we don't even need Mantine to win this game. Next game, we have Quagsire into Talonflame. So a matchup very good with the Aqua Tail variant as a bait move and just a good damage dealing move. Now my opponent doesn't know I have Aqua Tail, so I farm up to the Stone Edge, which Quagsires usually run. My opponent tried catching a move onto the Umbreon, and we have our Charge Bug, which is going to be able to deal with the Umbreon very easily. So I'm going to time my moves correctly here, but the thing is, I'm already maxed out on energy, so I believe going for unoptimal timing probably would have been better. So luckily, two X Scissors is actually able to knock out the extremely bulky Umbreon. We're able to reach a Discharge versus the Talonflame, which should get a shield or huge damage. I come into my Mantine to absorb the energy. Talonflame goes for a Brave Bird, and that almost puts us into the red. Their final Pokemon is Ferrothorn, and suddenly, I do not like the position we're in. This Bullet Seed damage is slowly chipping away, putting us into the red health range. Now, I guess on one hand, no shielding at Brave Bird means my opponent will basically go for Power Whips all the time, so they'll never go for a Thunder to try to one-hit Mantine. Now luckily I'm spamming these aerial aces and the Ferrothorn finally has no shields. I come into my Quagsire, I'm going to go for the Aqua Tail. My opponent doesn't know we have this move yet, so they committed the shield. Now I'm going to go for the second Aqua Tail. It barely doesn't knock out, but my opponent thought it did. So they didn't go for a charge move there and the Quagsire was able to beat a Ferrothorn. Aqua Tail really showed its true power in that game. Next game, Quagsire into Shadow Dragonair. My opponent throws on alignment. Now I do commit an early shield here. This is so my opponent can't take switch advantage yet. I go straight for a Stone Edge. If my opponent tries to call bait, they get Stone Edge, and which almost knocks them out. So a Shadow version would knock them out. 
They come into a Whiskash, and I'm just going to deal as much damage as I can, Quagsire into Whiskash, to get the very favorable alignment, which is going to be the Mantine into the Whiskash, and most likely the Chargebug into the Skarmory. I maximize the use of my Quagsire going for a Aqua Tail CMP, and the final Pokemon is a Talonflame, which is quite similar to a Whiskash Skarmory core, the Talonflame definitely being much weaker to the Rock types. Also more risky of a pick to use since the meta is filled with water types. So we come into our Chargebug after throwing an Ice Beam, which gets a shield. My opponent, another Brave Bird Talonflame. However, my opponent actually knew they couldn't win. And the Brave Bird was a nice surprise as we basically had a two shield advantage and the alignment to win that game. Next game, Quagsire into Go Go. If you don't know what this Pokemon is, I don't blame you. This is a Pokemon only locked in Safari Zones, so it's like unknown, an event-based Pokemon. Now unknown, to be fair, if you're extremely lucky, you can find a random one in the wild. Now I'm hard countered on the safe switch, charge a bug into Unova Stunfisk, so two X Scissors finally puts it into the yellow health range. X Scissor is a powerful move, but Ufisk is tanking them like they're nothing. I'm going to go for this third X Scissor and I'm going to undercharge it because I'm going to lose switch anyway. So let's get more energy with our Quagsire. Third Mud Bomb from Ufisk is going to take out the charge bug. In comes Quagsire. Quagsire is looking to farm down the Ufisk. Ufisk has reached one Mud Bomb. The question is, can it reach another one? It looks like we were able to mud shot it down, but they make one final Mud Bomb. It's decent chip damage, but do keep in mind that the Go-Go can basically one-shot us. I go for the Stone Edge, and Stone Edge actually gets a shield from the Go-Go, so maybe a Mantine with shield advantage can win this game. I'm expecting my opponent to Brick Break here and dip out, and their final Pokemon is Lickitung. We are defense drop, but we do have two shields, so let's see how this matchup plays out. We go for an Aerial Ace, opponent throws a Body Slam on optimal timing. I'm looking to switch into my Quagsire as soon as I can, just to get use out of it and clear the defense drop my Mantine currently has. I'm going to immediately throw this next Aerial Ace. My opponent, however, has farmed up a bunch of energy here. I go for this Aqua Tail, but this is actually a bad Aqua Tail. See, I get rid of the Lickitung's energy, but now Gogo can farm me down, and they're going to have enough energy to overwhelm my Mantine. I think the way I win this game is make the Lickitung throw their energy, but honestly, my opponent played this pretty well. So maybe they wouldn't have fell for my undercharge shenanigans the second time if they paid attention if I did it in the Ufisk matchup. GG's as we move into our final game, I believe, Quagsire into Talonflame again. I'm going to go for an Aqua Tail. A Stunish would once shot the Talonflame. A Aqua Tail will hopefully two hit knock it out. The Aqua Tail buff does get the shield. I'm going to no shield the charge move from the Talonflame. It's a third Brave Bird Talonflame. Can you believe I ran into this many Brave Bird Talonflames? I come in with Charger Bug. I got greedy. I definitely could have settled for the Aqua Tail. So that's actually a major misplay in this game. They come in with the Lantern. And this is so amazing they came into this. It makes sense because we had a Quagsire, so we no longer have a strong answer into the Lantern. Now the opponent may have thought I was running Aqua Tail Mud Bomb, so I'm going to double shield my lan uh, my Charchabug. x will take out the Lantern. I'm going to stay into the Charchabug matchup, and their final Pokemon is Trevenant. I'm going to go for an x here. x gets the shield. Now I want to switch into my Mantine as the opponent, I don't want them to over farm with the Trevenant and have a bunch of energy. So my opponent does send in the Town Flame. I go for two wing attacks and I go for the Aerial Ace here because I don't take the Incinerate damage. Also, Trevenant doesn't have a move, so Mantine is going to sweep in the end game. Now I did show a bunch of winning battles, which is how the day started. Throughout the day later is when I started losing. Aqua Tail Quagsire really did prove its strength. Now being a solid bait move or a solid move just in general. Now it is legacy unfortunately and we just missed the December community day to obtain a Quagsire. But if you want to spend the Elite TM, maybe it's for you. Does this make Quagsire the new number one mud boy? I wouldn't say so, but it definitely gives it play in the Open Great League. That's going to be it for today's video. I'm Luxball Gaming and I'll see you in the next video.